In fact, it's altogether the same sort of thing. In the act of meditation, we explore the great sea of Baina, which is considered the great mother, and we communicate with it. The water comes from the vase in the lady's right hand, her primary strength, symbolizes what happens when we meditate. We actually connect consciously with the universal mind. As for the water coming from the lady's left side and flowing out into the world, this symbolism presents an important Kabbalistic doctrine. It is said that the mind is capable of moving outward through senses in order to enjoy this earth that we're on right now. The five streams represent the five senses. In the non-meditative state, there is a continual flood of sensation coming in to you from outside sources. Of course, when you reach the level of meditation, you generate a reverse flow, and you begin to see from within yourself out into the world. You bring your higher consciousness into the interpretation of what you see on the outside. Quantum physics says you create that reality. And this changes the picture. You actually transform the data that you're sensing. And this is literally true in the quantum. So a student says, so there is a correspondence between the way our senses work, our hearing, our smelling, our breathing, our seeing, our tasting, and so on and so forth, and the actual reality of our existence? According to the report of the wise, this is not theory. This is the way it is. This is pure quantum physics. Your consciousness doesn't mean anything unless it has channels to work through. In order to be conscious, you have to have something going on all the time. The senses are the support system for our consciousness, of course. Looking out through the senses means looking through the intuitive faculties. If water flows strongly out through a pipe, nothing can come in. Nothing will come in to disturb you. When we no longer have outside stimuli hammering away at us all the time, the senses become channels of direct perception, the means by which we contact reality. This is what I meant when I said that Key 17 can change your life drastically. Everybody has something important to contribute. Everybody's important. Everything God created is important. On page 291 he says, the realm of Aquarius is what this card is dealing with, Aquarius, the water bearer. This is ruled by Uranus, the planet of inspiration. This is a word that literally means breath, the breath of God, actually. And remember that the atmosphere delivers the water. No water, no nothing. The seventeenth key represents the natural intelligence. We're all naturally intelligent. It's inborn in us. We're trying to get this particular element in ourselves quite clear and free of as much nonsense as possible. So intelligence will rule, and that will make the world very different from what it is right now. So that's Jason Lauderhand on these ideas on what I call the quantum cards being actual revelation cards. I love that concept. Finally, Paul Foster Case, in his book, The Tarot, A Key to the Wisdom of the Ages, discussing Key 14, the temperance card, in the Boda card deck, it is aligned with the Hebrew letter Samic, which means a tent peg or a prop. It is what makes a tent secure and thus corresponds to what would now be suggested to us by the foundation of a house. Therefore, it's a foundation. It is the letter symbol of that which is the basis or support of our house of life. And definitely so. It is that which sustains, preserves, and maintains our personal existence. Wrath is the quality associated with the Hebrew letter Samic, but this is a blind. The literal meaning of the original Hebrew noun means quivering or vibration. And this is precisely how quantum particles act through vibration. A basic identity of meaning, vibration is the fundamental nature of the fiery power which makes sight possible. And that same power is the source of all of our strengths. Page 154, he says, The idea is that vibration is the basis of manifestation, and that all vibration is essentially like sound, the mode of vibration which is particularly associated with the hierophant in the tarot deck, 
Vibration is fluctuating motion, undulation, pulsation, alternation. It takes wave forms. Like I say, the quantum mechanics tarot card, well ahead of their day and time. Very interesting. Temperance in the day when tarot was invented meant tempering or modifying. It therefore suggests adaptation, which is the essence of science, as I will show you from David Bohm, the great quantum physicist. To adapt is to equalize, to adjust, to coordinate, to equilibrate. Equilibrium is the basis of the great work. At the bottom of the picture is a pool corresponding to the ninth Hebrew Sephirah, Yesod, which is the seat of the automatic consciousness or vital soul in man. The path rising from the pool appears and will be observed to be rising over rolling ground and thus imitates the wave motion which is characteristic of all forms of vibration. At the upper end of the path is a crown. It signifies the attainment, mastery, unlike ideas. One foot of the angel rests on the water, which is symbolic of the cosmic mind stuff. The other is on land, symbol of concrete physical manifestation. You notice the dual particle wave aspect of the quantum here. Now, in the White Rider deck, he notes on page 156, the angel pours water from the cup in his left hand to that in his right. The cups are of gold to symbolize the idea that all forms of life expression have radiant energy for their basic substance. This is our DNC 88, is it not? This is so powerfully presented in the revelations that Joseph Smith received in section 88. The light of Christ, the aspect of our life substance, is in and by and through all things. It governs all things. It shines. It is the law, the basis upon which reality is based. But reality is not material. Reality, now quantum physics has proposed, is based upon consciousness, or as Joseph Smith's revelation calls it, the light of Christ. And this is, this is the insight that I wanted to share with you. Um, I believe a study of the quantum physics can disturb our normal uh, routine way of seeing the world. And that's why it's so spooky, that's why it's shocking. I also believe it can give us deeper spiritual insights into not only the revelations of Joseph Smith, not only into the scriptures, but into the other vital revelatory systems that God has given to all of his children throughout the world using their various symbolisms, whether it's in the ancient continent of India with their dancing god Shiva, a very, very powerful quantum physics symbol, or in the tarot cards of temperance and the star card with their particles and waves and the inherent meaning of the unification within duality and diversity. It is a magnificent thing to contemplate how modern day science is taking us back, I'll say, full circle, back into a spiritual domain that really does vibrate in our souls. So thanks for joining me in this Backyard Professor podcast series. I'll see you next time on the podcasts. Have a great life.